Yeah, yeah, what it is. It's your man, King Eric, the media assassin. You know, I tune in to episode 459 of Off the Cuff Radio, sponsored by Buddy Boy Entertainment, Da Vinci Clothing, Jesse Boutique, and Core Financial, Fleetwood and the Cotton Pickers. I got my host, T-Max, with the facts in the building. What it do, what it do, y'all. OTC, another tremendous Thursday, Thursday Night Thunder. We're about to swing the hammer like Thor, giving you more for the score. What it do, what it do, what it do. Shout out to our co host, a lot of fan, man, ladies and chiller. We are live and direct. Let's get it. Yeah, man, this is going to be a special show right here. Y- y'all heard that classic single from 1993, Scrub the Ground, from this group here that's on the line with us. And now you can hear that song pretty much snip, spice, sample, whatever, and a lot of your favorite rappers today. The song is taking a life of its own, but the cold part about it is that these guys are still putting it down. They're not letting up. They're still putting out great projects, and they're still keeping that energy from Florida steady fluid. So without further ado, I want to introduce the Splat Pack. Represent yeah. Florida. You guys are on off the cuff radio. State your names. He, he, what's happening? What's happening? This your boy Uncle here. Hey. One third of the group Splat Pack. It's your boy Q Dog. What it do? What it do? What's that? What's the deal, man? We happy to have y'all on, man. Straight Florida legends in the building, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, appreciate y'all for having bro. us, man. Y'all don't know what time it is. We're gonna go off the cuff. Man, look, Head, it's great to have you back with us. Um, I mean, of course, you know, you got your partner around with you. Of course, we, we cannot start off the show without giving much love, much respect, much great remembrance to Kid Money, man. Um, yes, sir. Oh, God, I mean, you all, oh, man, we, we, we're lined up for some for some hardcore history tonight. Um, you know, one thing about it, y'all, is... When we look at the 90s hip-hop, we look at the 90s hip-hop that is, you know, a lot of times people will first think about the inception of when hardcore rap really began to take over, of course, with Dre, Snoop, you know, Cube, you know, but even before that, going back to Florida, I mean, you know, I mean, of course, you had Luke started off with Two Live Crew that really, really was. We're going to get to that later about how he would lay the foundation for you guys in terms of really, really, really helping put on. But, I mean, in the 90s, I mean, people forget the bass craze was, like, going nuts. I mean, you guys, right. DJ Magic Mike, I mean, 69 right. boys. I mean, yeah. yo, I mean, this show is about... The Florida, it's about Miami, it's about Fort Lauderdale, Tallahassee, or it's about the whole culture the whole scene. of rump. Yes, the whole rump shaking, booty bass, cuties quaking all over the place. Man, I mean, oh yeah, I guess we're gonna get right. Yeah, we're gonna get right into it, y'all. I mean, tell us about y'all history, how y'all started. You know, all the way from now till today. Well, <clears throat> okay, well, um, we started, you know. We we all basically grew up together, you know, me, kid, and head, you know, head being yeah. the youngest, me being the oldest, you know, um, me and kid, you know, we, we've been, I've been knowing kids since he was three, you know, oh, when I was five, <laughs> yeah, wow. you know, we go way back like that, we stayed across the street from each other, you know, playing together, you know, as legit, <clears throat> man, you know, and, and once we got to high school, you know, I used to always go pick up kid, you know, and we used to go go buy and scoop up head. We ride around, you know what I'm saying, drinking. They weren't they weren't smoking like that then, but you know, I used to cheat, you know, and get head drunk. In the Chevy Chevelle. <laughs> Come on, man. He passed out <laughs> with the eight, he, had, he had some eight inch uh eight inch uh speakers in that thing, the, the whole wall of the yeah, night. The Alpine, All right. Yeah. <laughs> we drinking Nikki. So, come on, man. Come on, man. You know we we Look, go way the back dog, like that. The dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you know from from now, you know, um, like right after right after high school, you know, you know, I kind of was doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? Being being hard head. You know, and head and kid, they they and all they had already moved. To, uh, to Atlanta, so kid had came back to Palm Beach, 
to visit. And um, I was on house arrest, but he came to my job where I was working, you know, and told me about Splat Pack that he was putting the group together, you know, and he let me hear some songs that I did. It was on um, him with some other cats with Swifty and um, and um, Big L and yeah, Money Big D. L, yeah, yeah. He he let me hear that that music, but he said that he he wanted to um, you know, he was kind of trying to do something different in the name of the group Splat Pack. So I was like, yeah, dog, I want to be a part of that, man. And he said, well, all right, all you got to do is come to Atlanta. So I told him, well, when I get up, once I got up off my paper, that I was going um, to come up to Atlanta. So um, long story short, moved to Atlanta. Head and kid was all ready, though. You know, we, we was doing um, production in, in, at, the, at the house, 1803 mm-hmm. with K2. Yes, sir. And you know, and we it just went from there. Man, um, in yeah. terms of the pedigree that you guys brought so, uh, together, some of you guys' uh, music, music, musical influence coming up. What happened? All right, what was you guys' musical influences coming up? I mean, I need personally, like, uh, I'm, I'm old school, like I use them. Watch my mom and listen to a lot of like LTD and Jeffrey Osborne and, and Teddy Pendergrass and Peebo Bryson when she used to be walking around in her romper cleaning up on Saturday <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> Switch around cleaning up on Saturdays and stuff like that. Listen to that stuff, man. And as I got older in the 80s, like when in my teenage years, I, I'm a jam pony head. You know what I'm saying? I like jam pony express DJ. Shout out to Slick Vic. Um, like too short and 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 Dr. Dre movement, and and and, and that was me, bro. It's like I'm a UGK fan, and, 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 and stuff like that. So me, man, I used to ride like Jam Pony, Jam Pony, Jam Pony, Jam Pony, bro. But my but my music influences, like I say, I'm old school. That was that's listening to what my mom was cleaning up, cleaning up or uh, listening to. Yeah, yeah see me, I, about them Saturday afternoon tunes, yo, for real. Come on, man. See, I was influenced by you know some some of the same artists, uh, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Um, yeah. I, I I used to like um like I was I listened to all different types of, of music, so uh, I was a big Journey fan. I was a big uh, Chicago fan. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Peter Patel, I, yeah, man. Yeah. He, Come on, yeah, man. man. I was, a, I'm a big Elton John fan. Hey, people don't, people don't even know where I even, I, I even used to listen to Barry Manilow. I live in that. Listen, listen, bro. We, we, we in the dog. elevator. We, we in the elevator. He's saying it. Come on. I'm looking at him like he's crazy. He's singing it loud. People <laughs> looking at him crazy. I'm like, man, how, I'm like, what? That and L. John. This, I mean, that damn man. I'm looking, I'm like, man, bro, where you know this from? He's singing it loud, dude. I'm like, oh. Yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, was, see, I also grew up, you know what I'm saying, on, on, on Frankie Beverly and Mays. You know what I'm saying? The oh, yeah. OJs. You know what I'm saying? Isley Brothers. I always loved the Isley Brothers sound. Yeah, I mean, so, you, can't, you can't. Yeah, you can't go wrong with any of that. I mean, when you're dealing with Steve Perry from Journey, of course. I mean, Peter Cetera from Chicago. You see, those the Chicago come on, Transit man. Authority. Eagles. I mean, of course, yeah, Eagles. Yeah, Eagles, I mean, five. Eagles. I mean, Don Henley. You know, I mean, Glenn Frey. You know, Dan Felder. Come on, I mean, man. It, yeah. It, it, the 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 diversity. One thing about it, I think, a lot of times in music, you know that a lot of people have to understand is that music is not one dimensional it's not monolithic it's multi-dimensional it's all about if right. it's good it's good and being an artist you are able to appreciate mm-hmm. that now you all oh, coming man. in from florida you know uh and of course moving to atlanta um and i and hey i gotta send you know you cue that picture because it's an old joint from the 19. 19- 94 issue of the Source magazine where y'all was posted up with some cuties. Matter of fact, there was that red bone big titty chick in it. <laughs> <laughs> I you, still got the, you still got the clip? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a photo. It's from one of my Source magazines. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I remember that. 
Yeah, yeah I, me too. That, I was a young look I was a young dude at the time. I see that I'm like, yo, who is that red ball with the biggins right there? <laughs> I, see, oh, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta send that to me too. We gotta look her up. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll do. Yeah, man. Um so you guys had a double dose of dipping in terms of how you all were part of two huge music scenes because as well as Florida, um, going to Atlanta at the time in the nineties you know, this is when the Atlanta scene was really beginning to blow up. Um, you know, of course, it already had La Face with L.A. Reid and Babyface, you know, with their label, you know. Um, a lot of people were going, blowing up. But, I mean, this is around 1990, the early 1990s, of course, TLC, yeah, Chris Cross, you know, Dallas Austin. Yeah. You know, Outkast. Yeah, Jermaine you know, Dupree, Dallas you know, Austin was doing uh, their thing. Yeah, you know, two dope boys in, Outer, uh, in a Cadillac named Outcast. I think y'all heard of them, too. You know, organized. Oh, yeah, 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 they were beginning to come up. Um, what was it like being around during that time in terms of really, like, seeing all of this, you know, uh, this new wave? Because you all are legends from being part of that New South movement. Um, what was it like during that time to see all those groups come up and being part of it? Well, what? Well, what what was special about that is all of us knew each other and we all came up right. together. Right. Because we used to like I used to help I used to be at a at a record store shot at T.O. Hill called Super Sound Records and Tapes off um mm-hmm. it was by by um Greenbrier Mall. Greenbrier. Yeah. I used to oh, be there like yeah. every Saturday with K two. Yeah. If we weren't out of town I was there every Saturday with K two learning the, the the record store side of the business. And stuff like that. So I used, we used to bump shoulder and, and used to hang out with a lot of a lot of them too. Like, yeah. Like I used to be with uh, be around Wicked from Ghetto Mafia a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We was we all was in the club. We all grew. I mean, came up together. It just they they yeah, gravitated to us because we were from Florida. They used to call us country. And yeah. We was they like, did. Nah, man, y'all country. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's man, in, and yeah, it's, it's Go ahead. Go ahead, Q. Like where where um people don't know that we we came out, you know, right there at the same time that Outcast and Goody Mob came out. They first album wasn't even not when um yeah. when when we all knew each other, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, like knew each other, knew each other. You know what I'm saying? People don't know that you know that we knew CeeLo and Andre them like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you and, and Timo, you, you and know, you and Timo, you you to hang out. Yeah, mm. me and Timo, yeah, and Cujo. You know we, yeah. we 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 go back. You know we go back. You know like that. So we uh, done. You know from when Dungeon Family was at you know Rico Mom house. Yeah, yeah Rico God, Way, that's dead, Ray MC Ray Breed, Murray. man, MC Breed yeah. was my dog. Yeah, Breed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bree, ooh, yeah, Bree, we used to we used to hang out at the club. Oh man, because we went in the uh, got we had we had a show, man, and we and they shot the damn got to get mine, got to get yours video with Tupac. We, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we were supposed, supposed to go to be, be in the man. video. But yeah, man, man, like all of us, all of us came up like silk, like little Gary used to um, cause when I first moved up there, um, February '92, me and Kia had an apartment in Australia, Georgia. And uh, mm-hmm. and uh, little Gary from Silk, he was a company to sleep over there. We, we all were trying to do music together. And Phelan, who is Jazzy Faye, that's who kid used to be. Kid used to be signed to his dad, J.E.A. J-E-A Records, when he had a song called Gangsta Walk that did big, did good up there in Memphis, up there in Tennessee. So uh, a lot of people uh, don't know um, Kid Money was Kid Money was signed to um, James Alexander, which is uh, Jazzy Faye's daddy. You know, so, yeah, all I'm of us used to be around each other, bro. You know what? Uh, you know, Q and O. I'm gonna tell y'all something right now on air. This is almost like the San. This is like the San Francisco 49ers of what Bill Walsh had. You know, in, the, in terms of all those guys like Mariucci, you know, Denny Green, all those guys yeah. that came off that coaching tree. You all were right in the mix of Atlanta, where there were just so many branches. I mean, yeah. you know, where everybody, you know, and this is something where people really got to understand it in terms of how movements are cultivated because it's, people only see it after artists 
start blowing up. Nobody sees it in terms of the grind, in terms of how these, you know, everybody's doing all the shows, how they're interacting. Like, you know, y'all talked about out at Greenbrier. I mean, because I, I when I was down there, I used to love to hit, you know, Lennox in the underground. Right. Man. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, but, the, I mean, yeah. it, it's, I tell the youngest today, Atlanta was just different back then. Like, you had to have been there. I mean, we're freaking it on Peach Tree. Yeah, old Atlanta, Atlanta, man. Old Atlanta was, it was so different. Yeah, man. See, every, mean, everybody back then was about partying and having a good time, enjoying, enjoying yeah. themselves. You know, it, was, it wasn't about beefs and, um, you know, gunplay and all of that. You know, you might, you might, you, man, I tell you the truth, I don't even... I don't even ever remember seeing a fight during Freak Nigga. We was there like three years and, straight. And that, yo, and that's the wild thing because Freak Nick, um is is something right. that it is of legendary proportion. I mean, and I was a young nigga back then, so I mean, for us to even, you know, me and my peoples were young. So I mean, just the fact, I mean, we was like all y'all niggas out there are spoiled because of between spelled it. I mean, Clark Atlanta. I mean. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was just, I mean, y'all, look, I remember when we came down there, me and my family, and we drove past Spellman. I was about to tell my daddy, look, just let me out of the car. Just just drop me off. <laughs> I'm going to be all right. I'm be all right. <laughs> and I was 17 at the time. I'm like, yo, let me out. Let me out. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, man, shoot all used to go down. Me and shoot all used to go down there and post up. <laughs> Come on, man. Go out there and post up, baby. <laughs> hey, we, we, we the only niggas out there walking around chiefing. And niggas looking at us like we crazy. But see, I I, yep. I was fresh from Florida, you know what I'm saying. And in Florida, even though even though it wasn't legal, you know what I'm saying. We that's what we used to do. And police didn't really fuck with you like that. Yeah, so, yeah I'm know, right. We, come on, man. So when when we when um when when I got um to Atlanta with them, yo man here used to go down there and post up walking around chief. Yeah, and and it's. And it's crazy so, because during was, that time, like y'all said, yeah. that, that's what made that era so special. Because, you know, you ain't have a lot of the cameras. You ain't had a lot of the social media stuff out there. Right. The vibe right. was I right. promise well, you, I, be, I see it all the time. I be thinking, ride. God, they ain't had that shit going on <laughs> when we was in back then. Oh, my God. Did they have camera phones and all that shit back then? Yeah, yeah, we've been what? a whole lot of trouble. So we we got we got look, All right. we, look. This is where the this is where the this is where the parents need to cover the kids' ears when we about to go with it because we I used to hear stories about like it would just go down like round right the road. I mean, you know, er, I mean, look, it's all types of wildness. I mean, you know, everybody, you know, between chicks getting ate, ate out, niggas getting sucked off, you know, bras. I mean, everybody was just going. It's like everybody was just going nuts out there once it went down. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. That's exactly what used to happen. We all on that. But trip me out, man. What, what be tripping me out was when people come up to me like, bro, you know how much pussy I got off y'all? And, I be, and, and, and they'll tell me a sad song. Man, I got so much, boy, I got me some good-ass puss off squirrel of the ground. Wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> For real. That's what I be saying. How the hell? How the hell? What the hell you had going on, though? Now, that's my head. Now, y'all know how I saw a slow head. Now, how the hell? Yeah, I had a several female. You you were saying your verse while I'm sucking your dick. Uh, Ooh, baby <laughs> yeah, doll, so my conscience mean. is telling me it's your name again. I'm saying a verse. You want me to sing it to you too? <laughs> Come on. I I I what? I've gotten the same thing several times. Okay, put it here. Put, okay. Come on. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But we we were in, we was at Freak Nick, man. How, how about? One year while we was at Freak Nick, I don't know. If you, I had, I know you remember this. We we were um we were downtown like over by Piedmont Park. Okay. No, no, we we were downtown and it was like all the street was just deserted. We we walking and we looking around like damn man. I oh, I remember. Saw it. And then they had the um they had the, the news there, the news people there. So we were like okay, that's yeah. cool. So we went across the street. 
As soon as we got on the news, it seemed like from from every corner, it seemed like thousands of they people rushed. just started coming from out of nowhere. We were just like, what yeah. is the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. They rushed, but it'll it, it, it never be. They say never say never, but it'll it never be another free. Yeah, no, it'll never no. be. They, they, it'll never be. When you, you getting out your cars on, on, on the highways, partying, whole getting by a nigga, people getting sucked up on the road, and you, you yeah. all right in the cars, fuck, man, ain't gonna be. It'll never be another that. That's when we had cam for that never. shit back then. God, we had cam no, for kid got it, and, and, and cute all and free stuff for remedy. Uh, some Kool Aid and some gin. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't that was vodka. We had, yeah, no, that, that, had that, we that had a water bottle. Kid and got dead yep. drunk. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fight kid everybody. Wanna fight, kid want to fight everybody. Boy, that boy, all right, but we have some. Oh, that's Come crazy. on, dudes coming up there talking. Hey man, y'all come get vodka, the boy, yeah, one vodka and Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what was the, I mean, but when you think about that Atlanta movement, y'all, like King was saying, you know, just how it was, uh, because like y'all said, Freaking It is of legendary proportions, but like y'all said, there was never anything, I mean, these were, people got to understand the numbers uh, for that weekend yeah. that would come down, well, that week rather, because this was roughly over 100,000 college students coming from all over the country. You know, this was... Yeah. This was freaking it was basically one big ass party. Um, but you never, ever, ever really heard about anything in terms of violence. You know, you might have had a couple of scuffles, but like y'all said, gunplay wasn't really a thing. Everybody was genuinely there. When you think when we go back to that Atlanta area, though, I mean when we think about MC Bree, rest in peace. Uh, shout out yeah, to man Sherrod G who represents Flint, Michigan as well, where Breed is from. Um, right. Right. Shout out to the shout out to the Green Eye Bandit, legendary beat layer Eric Sermon, who's still with us today. Yeah, he's still up. He's still up in Atlanta and Ross. Um, what was what was going on down there where everybody was coming to Atlanta? Because you know Eric Sermon used to have his rim shop there. What was what yeah. was yeah. What, what just brought everybody there? And we haven't even talked about the Falcons with Dion when it was prime time with him and the Braves. I mean. Oh God! I mean, what, I mean, what brought everybody there? What was the attraction? How did Atlanta become that mecca? And this is just the first iteration of the flyness, but we're not even seeing the full bloom as the years progress. Um, I'm going on with it, but I'm just like, what, I want to get this from the source. What was? Y'all gotta break it down. Well, <laughs> please. Well, well, what I think, I think what it is is um, um, that. The the music the music industry had had just started to flourish um, up here in Atlanta, you know. Right. So mm-hmm. a lot of that a lot of that that music scene is what brought a lot of people here. Think you know with, with with the um with the expectations on on getting on you know as an artist. Uh, and right. Not just that. Uh, uh, not with, just that. Right. That free uh, Nick and just the females. Period. Hmm. Right, and and then and, and, and the music gravitated to the strip club, and when they yeah. when they gra- everybody knew to take their music to the if you broke your song in the strip club it was over, you, you, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? So the strip clubs was king, club niggas, gentlemen club, lying. jazzy keys, stuff like he that. Ain't the ain't club ain't was thing, but the, the, the strip right. club yeah. when when the strip club was real. Cause right now they go way up to the sky and they drop down from the sky to the to the to the uh to the field and to the floor now. But yeah, it's, it's like you know, five dollar lap dances and stuff like that. People knew, if, okay, I'm gonna go take this thing to the strip club. Once you get them girls on yeah. it, that was it. And and like you said, yeah. Dion and uh, Andre Rising and Dominique yeah. Wilkins, he yeah, really the original man that they it was the mecca. It was the mecca for sports, yeah. music, women, and, and you had the AUC. You had Claude Morris, yeah. Brown, St- uh, 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 Spelman, and all that stuff like that. So, yeah, man. It was basically the Black Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. That was basically yeah. what it was. Yeah, basically. And, and not yeah. just that. Everybody knew that <clears throat> Atlanta 
Atlanta was strip club capital of, uh, of the United States at one, you know, oh, during yes, that sir. time. Atlanta had yes. more strip clubs than any other state in America. Right. <laughs> Man, right. look, we got to give our, you know, I mean, Q, Hedge, I mean, y'all giving us so much history. This is, we got to, we got to tell people and King, you know this as well because you're from North Carolina, so you had those connections in Atlanta as well. This is people really have to understand, and you know our uncles here, the Flat Pat. We call them disrespectfully because they're our elders, they are legends. We love them dearly. They're giving up y'all game. Now this is how real what they're saying is, and they're going to co-sign when I say this. But people to really understand how big the strip club scene down in Atlanta was at that time, let me just break it down in three words. Cars, houses, colleges. And the dancers were getting okay. paid to pay for all of that. I mean, you had girls yeah. that got, who did their years through college who who were dancing and paid off their college tuition. Yeah, yeah. You talk yeah. about girls that bought Oh, yeah, and a lot of them go there for that. A lot of them go there to yeah. go, oh, I'm finna, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm finna go, I'm gonna pay my way through school, but soon they pay their way through school, they don't stop, because they, they, they don't, they don't, they, they'll, they'll try to stop for a little second, but they miss that money. So yeah. they back in, they, I, they, they in it. I gotta ask y'all this right quick while we're on it, and it's something on my mind. When Ice Cube did Players Club, because that is, you know, it was set in Atlanta, and it was, uh, how real was that when he depicted that in that film of how that dancing was? Shout out to Lisa Ray, of course, and Monica Calhoun in their roles as Diamond and Ebony. Um, how real was that in terms of what he depicted in that film? It was pretty, it, it, it was pretty similar, but it wasn't like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, but but Bernie Mac character reminded me of dude me and Q used to hang, he he used to be the manager. He don't remind you, like Bernie Mac care they don't mind you to wash a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, yeah, he does. Bernie, rest Walsh. in peace, Bernie. God yeah, God bless the dead, man. Rest in peace, Wash, man. But it, but Bernie yeah. Mac care to remind me of a dude named Wash who used to run club niggas too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, see, man. Oh. With, <laughs> with with that what he had talking about, we um we we end up, we had a show in Atlanta. Um, one mm-hmm. night, you know, and um, so um, anyway, sometime after the show, well, Walsh and Kid kind of got into it for some mm-hmm. reason. So, and Walsh was the manager of, of Nicky's, and he told us mm-hmm. he say it was Flat Pack. They they say Flat Pack couldn't come back to Nicky's no more. It was Nicky's too. And they were like Flat Pack is banned from Nicky's, and I was like, banned from well. And I was like, man, these ain't finna stop me from going now. So I went in there. <laughs> you know, and they they were, and, and my dog Bam was DJing. And Bam was shouting out my name. And I went and told him, man, come on, dog. Man, it went off in there. And then from that point yeah. on, man, we was we was downstairs with them gambling on, on Sega Genesis, um, John Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Taking all their money. Man. <laughs> Taking all their money. <laughs> But yeah, why why scared to reminded me of Bernie Mac, man. It was like, well, that's crazy. But yeah, it, it was fifty percent. I say fifty to sixty percent, like how it was. But nah, that that strip club scene was ooh, it was so real. Yeah, man. Um, For real. And spread the blow back then too. Say what happened? Yeah. So yeah, to have some heavy Don't bread at the time to blow back then. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, now, money, money, money was a little different back then than how it is now. Yeah, yeah, you the know, paper trail different. Yeah, it is. You know, one thing, a, a shout-out to Steve Stoller, the mixed king out of New York, because this kind of ties into what y'all are saying about the money, because, you know, we had him on a couple of years ago, uh, the incredible Italian. And um, he was talking about back in the day when label budgets were just ridiculous. Remember that show, King, when we talked to him about how much those guys were getting in terms of that label money back in the day? Yeah. Um, what was it like in terms of just, like y'all talked about, the paper route in terms of the clout was just totally on a whole other level with the trails? Um, what was it like in terms of that street money, that music money? Because y'all knew everybody from both sides on the block, you know, to the recording booth. 
in terms of who was getting it. Um, what was the big ball in light during that time in terms of what it meant when you were really, really flexing? Because, I mean, we're taking this back to an era where, um, where we see so many things commonplace now with Bentleys, you know, Cuban links, Rollies. But back in the day, like, you was really, like, heavy on the block if you had that. Um, give us more of that history, y'all. Okay, well, with Ooh. that, as far as, especially, especially on those streets, you know, niggas wasn't riding, you, you, you didn't see no niggas riding in no Bentley. The biggest thing a nigga had was, might, might have been a Maserati, and Maserati was mm. like a Benz den. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, real. <laughs> Maserati was like a Benz back then, so, you know what I'm saying? You know, niggas rode around Audi, you know, little, little things like, you know, yeah, yeah, Lexus, you know, things like that. When the Lexus so, first dropped. Come on, yeah, yeah, Infinity, see, Infinity, them Q45s, them, them, them hoes was big amongst that, you know, during that era, too. But see, with that money thing, like, street money was better than um, than industry money unless you were signed to a major, you mm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, and, and even with even with being signed to a major, you had to be, like, a mega star just to hit up in the hundreds, hundreds of thousands. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And because basically it's like a, a, a few hundred thousand back then is a few million now. Right. right. Yeah, it was real money, man. Like the, like I tell, you, it was real money. We had CDs, cassettes. You know what I'm saying? That that we were set. It wasn't streaming. It was real. Right. You had to get it from the muscle with them CDs, cassettes, and. And like I tell people, people look at me crazy and I be like, bro, when we when we recording our shit back then, it wasn't nothing free. Y'all get free yeah, studio time all. and all that stuff now. Do studio time and all used to come out on our royalties, everything. Come on, man. All that, for real. Got all that back. Everything, for real. Everything, everything. They don't understand, but... Anything it, it that they it. put money into to, 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 push your, to, push your, um, to push your image, you paying for. Right. And it came out right off. Yeah, and it, and, and it wasn't all that. We flexed back then, but not like how they do now. They 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 yeah. ridiculous, man. This 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 is this is crazy what they got going on now, bro. For real. Come on, Point man. The world it, 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 two it, it, <laughs> what um, happened? How you going? You can't tell. I say, who in the world need two watches? How you need two watches? A uh, watch on each arm. Right. I'm saying what you oh, saying. He you saying he didn't do. They, they they do it for these hoes bad too. Oh, that nigga over there, he didn't throw out what look like he didn't throw out by fifteen grand and I'm finna throw out by twenty five. Shit like that, like man, y'all okay, y'all boy, y'all crazy. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I used to go to the I used to go to the to the ATM before we go in the strip club. I used to put out fifty yep. dollars. Come on. <laughs> I used to I I used to, I used to drink by twenty. We we drank Heineken heavy back then. I used to drink by yep, twenty dollars worth of Heineken and get get them hold by the good ten to fifteen dollars uh, for the day. And that that, they, and that we, be it. They wouldn't let us pay back then anyway. They went no, you they wouldn't let us yep. pay no dance. So we were taking some of them on the road. So hey, groupie the paper love, trail man, now, man, they crazy. <laughs> It was, mostly, it was mostly the athletes. It was mostly the athletes that was. They were, that was that's when they knew. Like you know, in the movie Players Club, when a when celebrity was in the building, they hit that bell. They know when an athlete's yeah. in there, they're gonna, they gonna run out there. Yeah. They're gonna shell at least about 300 stacks. Right. Yeah. Like, damn, yeah. that's the Deion Sanders. We about to get that bag now. Right. Yeah, we yeah, had that crazy. We that. had a fight at we had a fight at we had a fight at Deion Sanders Club out there in Dallas. In Texas, oh, yeah. Wow. We, matter of fact, yeah, we were living out there then. <laughs> you were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we done fought out there, man. God bless the dead, so the chaos with us, man. Yeah, we oh yeah. Oh, I my had goodness, Deion bro. Sanders he had Club Twin well, De- Club Dion out there. Prime. Prime uh, it yeah. was um uh, prime time. Yeah, prime yeah. time twenty one. Yeah, did yeah, y'all did y'all, ever, did y'all did y'all ever get to meet Dion face to face and chop it up with him? Nah, no, not me personally. Face to face. 
Yeah, we we had the um uh, we had to meet with 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 his um uh, management of the club though, and write him an yeah, apology. Yeah, we showed that. We sure did. Our, uh, our management at the time had to write a letter of apology for us fighting in the club. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was crazy. Yeah, now, that was some young days. That was a young I want to ask this too. I want to ask you all this too because we pride ourselves on being uh, multifaceted and dimensional. When you look at what um, Dion was wild back in the day, and he'll tell you that for those that really know his story. Um, to see him as an all-time great, uh, we're just going to say he, for my money, he's the greatest cornerback ever, hands down. Uh, NFL yeah. legend, all the way from college at Florida State, you know, to NFL legend, to commentator, and now coach. And what he's doing for black college football at Jackson State in terms of regret. I mean, Love how huge is that to watch? Because you all, even if y'all didn't meet directly back in the day, y'all watched him in terms of what he was doing. So to see him now, because y'all are right up in that same age bracket now, and to see him transition <clears throat> and not only become a coach, but a successful one, and is changing that paradigm shift in terms of how black college sports is going um, and inspiring a lot of our children to go there, uh how do you all feel in terms of seeing that movement and watching that on the athletic landscape as well for Man. higher academics for our young people? It's great to me, man. From number one, he's from Florida. You know, so he, he's yes, from he Florida, is. man. And, and, yeah. And, yeah, he's from Fort Myers, Florida. And yeah, a lot of Fort people Myers, doubted his sure. vision. A, a, lot of, a lot of people doubted his vision, man, and didn't think he was going to be able to change it. Like that, and he changed it quick too. And then he just oh, went yeah. and smashed the number one and the number two recruit. You know what I'm saying this year? So it's like, man, to see him, him and shy to Eddie George too, because Eddie George up there at Tennessee State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's like they changing the black culture, man. It's like it's a beautiful thing because a lot of we we already know some of us, on, but some of them on the other side don't want that to happen, especially after Dion and took. Then, 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 I ain't gonna say took, but got that, that got that boy respect. Cause Dion is considered one of the kings of Florida State. To see, yep. to see them burn, cause I'm, I live over here in Tallahassee. To see some mm-hmm. of them people from Florida State people burn his jersey and burn some of his memorabilia. I'm like, come on, man, y'all, y'all trip. So this, how wait y'all a minute, doing. that happened? What, what, what oh yeah, that happened. happened? I didn't know about the Oh, yeah, you can go with that going. happened. He burned some of his memorabilia around here because he got Travis Hunter from them. Ah, okay. Yep. Got you. Yeah. And see, I, okay. Yeah. And what they don't understand is he, okay. he, he yeah. really didn't get them from him. You know what I'm saying? Because Travis, if that's the same dude, he, he he right here in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That that was the number one That was the number one um, prospect. So he, he, was looking at, he was looking at Florida State and Georgia. But he turned both of them down and went to Jackson. So one, once, yeah, he he that, that. One, once he did yeah, that, once he did that, he was the number State. one uh, quarterback in Georgia. And once he did mm-hmm. that, they took him from number no, one he, to number he, two. He the corner. He a cornerback and wide receiver. Yeah. No, but, they got a quarterback. You know, yeah, he that. That that man ain't allowed no touchdowns while he was in high school. I'm like, what? So of course he's going to go to Dion. He's going to go to the best cornerback ever to play the right. game, so he can learn exactly to right. position, learn, learn the position because he's going to lead. So he switched his commitment and went to Jackson State, which was smart. Why not go? I'm going to go up there with Dion, so Dion can teach me this position. So when I go to the NFL, I'm going to be five. Uh, right. uh, Ramsey Junior. Ramsey be balling. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and, you know, like, it, yeah, and I think a lot of times too, when we look at a lot of times these kids coming in, um, you know, we just got to keep it bumped because we're all sports fans here. Um, yeah, the road to the to the league, whether you're playing in the NBA or the NFL, is not an easy one. Um, we have seen so many players from so many schools over the years. 
uh, that didn't make it. They should have, i.e., Darian Hagan, the quarterback from that 1990 Colorado Buffaloes championship team. He should have made it. Um, you know, uh, he's just so many. Uh, when you look at a lot of these guys come in, people have to understand, you know, they want to be in a position where they feel – that they have the best opportunity in terms of exposure. Mm-hmm. I mean, Alabama, of course, you know, they mm-hmm. lost this year. But Nick Saban is still going to get the kids because Saban, yeah. I think, if, and anybody can check me, check me in the comments on YouTube when we post okay. this show, Saban's been at Alabama, I believe, since 2009. And I believe over between drafted and undrafted players over 13, 12, 13 years, I think Saban has probably sent close to 90 players to the league over those years. Yeah, whether they were drafted or not drafted, um, and Dion is about to change the game because, especially if you're a corner, you get to learn from the greatest ever. Because they used to ride Dion and talk shit about him about how he didn't tackle. Yep. I'm like the nigga didn't need to tackle. The nigga was faster than everybody yep. else. All right, like, oh, all he, he, needed, just, he did what he needed yeah. to do: intercept and ran and ran it back for a touchdown. Yeah, I'm like they shut I, down. I, they knew that they half of them didn't even throw their side no more. Yeah, you're right. Was like the, he was like the Floyd Mayweather of our, of that time because he was so great. That's real. And was going out there. He was kicking ass in football. He was kicking ass in baseball. Baseball. He made yeah. white yeah. And, and shit. And, and what's crazy only, is everybody, the only person everybody was talking about during that time, during that, was Bo Jackson. But mm-hmm. Deion Sanders' career was a lot longer than Bo Jackson. Yeah, you know, that hip, that hip yeah, man. For me, for me and King, because we're Raider fans, that hurts us so bad in a 1991 uh, playoff game against the Bengals with Bo. Yeah, because yeah. Bo was on. Oh God! I mean, we just think about what could have been with Bo had he not gotten hurt uh, with yeah, that hip I injury. Thing. Um, because Bo would have been. Bo was special. Um, when we look at yeah, he was. The, when we look at Bo. Um, Jackson. When we look at Vincent Jackson, uh, when we look at Deion Sanders in terms of the dual sport athletes, I tell once again the young people today, you have to have been there to understand how incredible, not great, but incredible legendary that these individuals were to watch what they right. did on the field. Deion is right. the only player in sports history to hit a home run and run a kickoff back in the same week. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that. Yep. Yep. I mean, Bo, some of the stuff he did in the college ranks, I mean, at Auburn, I mean, with Coach Pat Dye, I mean, when he played with the Royals, yep. I mean, the stuff he would do, I mean, in terms of his bat, I mean, how he would just – I mean, Bo. I mean, what he did to Brian Bosworth in the pros when he ran, when he just yeah, that, he, him, yeah, he, he like, Brian Brian Bosworth's beer. <laughs> he he was he was special, man. Um, I mean, when when we when we tie all this history, this golden era, uh, you know, um, you know, it, 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 it's. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, because you, know, yeah, you know, uh, that was the mid-90s, like, when that song, um, Scrub the Ground, blew up. Yes, you, you also had a lot of the black TV shows popping off. You had... Modern. Black college, black college, um, black colleges popping off with the, with the basketball and the football. It was just like a renaissance, period. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, man, you had all the you had all the black party beats. I mean, like like Daytona beats going on, the Galveston beats, all this, all the beaches was popping, man. It's like, yeah, so yeah, yeah, and, man. Um, to 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 quote the late great uh, fashion, you know, uh, Vogue, ed- Vogue editor Andre Leon Tally. Tally because he would have yeah, a thing. I just seen you that. must connect. Yeah, you you know, um, the man was an icon in fashion. Um, yeah. You know, for those that know, and he had a phrase that he would always use, saying, "You must connect history." And like King said, this was the Black Renaissance. This was, you know, 
I, I tell the kids you have to understand, you have to have lived it to really understand the yeah, level of do. black excellence, the level of achievement, the level of show, the level of talent. Um, mm-hmm. When Scrub the Ground dropped for y'all, um, when did you all know that the record was catching fire where you were all headed on the road to really big things? I didn't like that song. Ooh, yeah, I'll be exactly. telling people all I oh I hated that song. I I ain't wanna do it. I just didn't I did not like that <laughs> fucking song, bro. Oh my gosh, he got on my nerves. I ain't like that song. <laughs> K two came and put the con- the, the bongos and all the cute dog. Like I said, cute dog, cute dog. Man, just go ahead and write your first dog my nigga. Just do the first dog, you gon' Cause that was the first song that was the first song I actually had wrote my own wrote my uh verse from. That when I first started writing my own stuff. Because uh, Let Me yeah. See Your Words, it was wrote. Uh, Kid had that one wrote, and he had Shake That Ass wrote. Them two songs was wrote. And Q-Dog came, because Q-Dog was in the situation. That's why he wasn't. Uh, he was in the situation in Florida. That's why he wasn't on Shake That Ass. Right. He, 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 mm-hmm. he was in the system. So he wasn't on Shake That Ass. When he got out, we did Let Me See You Work It. He, I mean, they, 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 I, I learned it and all that. So Q wrote his verse. And boom, it took off and all that stuff. Yeah, scrub the ground. I did not like it, boy. Like, cute all, cute all yeah. knew, and Q and Key knew. Yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew scrub the ground was gonna do something. I can't really tell you when when I knew that 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 it was gone, but I just knew one, one, once once it got on the airways that that it was gonna catch up. But see, we we was already doing shows just off shake that ass and let me see it work. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. Um, Scrub the ground. It just, you know, added to one of the songs that 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 was on my, um, that 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 we performed. You know, so I can't really tell you, and you know, I can't really pinpoint when when it caught. It may have caught, you know, during the same time. During the same time, um, let me see you work it, caught. Because I really, I wanted to put um, scrub the ground out first. You know that that's that that's what I said. I, we should have put scrub the ground out first, and then came back with. Uh, let me see you work it. I know. Yeah, we shot. But you know, we shot the video for let me see you work it. Um, that was our first video. People are like, why y'all ain't shooting no video for shake that ass? Yeah, yeah, we right. shot our first yeah. video shot. We shot for let, let me see you work it. And, and and it seemed like a couple months later they went to that scrub the ground with the catching. Yeah. We had two, cause both of them charted at the same time. They both charted in Billboard at the same time. Both of them songs charted. Yep. Yeah. Remember that, yep. you? Yeah, I Let remember. Let me see you work it. And uh, scrub the ground. The scrub, scrub the ground came yeah. out. It was bubbling, bubbling under, and it was charted. We were like, "Oh shit!" Yep. Now, one thing about it, y'all, is of course you all ended up having a classic jam, but. As I was, you know, as we were saying earlier in terms of what was going on with Luther Campbell's two live crew, he pretty much would lay the foundation for how y'all would have that artistic freedom to go, being from Florida because of the 1989 album, As Nasty As They Want to Be. And they got into that legal tip down in Broward County where they were trying to say that it was obscene and it got all the way to the Florida, you know, Florida State Supreme Court. Um, yeah, man, ultimately, I just, I, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just had a debate and told some people, some told told somebody told this dude. I was like, the reason why I was like, Luke is the reason why parental advisory stickers are on stuff right now. Yep. And he the reason why because he went to the door, went to jail about it. That's why I I, I see I, I got a lot of respect for Luke because he went to, he went to the door about it, man. He went to jail about it and all, bro. And it's so like, yeah. It, it's for that freedom of speech, man. It's like give that man a real award. I mean, a real uh, not them. It, yeah, to give him a real lifetime achievement award, man, like a Grammy or something, yeah. like respect that man, bro. Because it's like, come on, I, a lot of we wouldn't have been able to have, been able to show how girls shaking their ass halfway naked in our videos if it wasn't for that man. Hey, <laughs> hey, um, NWA wouldn't been wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't have been able to say fuck the police if yeah, it wasn't for, for that man. man. You know, right. like, and I think, pay, pay respect when it's due, man. Get a man his flowers right here, man. Get a man a real lifetime achievement award, American Music Awards, Grammy, whoever. Please. 
Because, man, the parental advisory stickers on people's music right now because of that man. People wouldn't well, be able to say that's right. They wouldn't be able to yeah. um, say what they say on their music if it wasn't for him. Because he, he fought for he fought for a right. You know what I'm saying? That that was already our right. Um, yeah. First Amendment, be able to say what we want to say. Freedom of speech. So, you know, he's saying, well, how y'all going to say I don't have that same freedom of music? Which is true. Because it's still your freedom of speech. And we still, believe it or not, we still fighting for freedom of speech because we can't say what the hell we want to say to these L B G Q F whatever alphabet motherfuckers. Yeah. We can't say what we want to say. What's crazy is that the fight is harder now because you have people with different voices. Like back then, you just had a certain organization. And the there you go. That cancel your whole shit. He probably stay somewhere in Oregon. Right. He can find some old shit, dig it up, and then it blows up. And you're going to be doing an apology tour. I'm like, yo, this dude that will have no power, no influence, he has a voice. Man. Right. Right. And, and, and now, did anybody say anything? Why is his, 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 his voice different than my voice? Because it's still free to right. speak. And you know, also, we, that we, 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 still, we still fighting for that, man. You know, um, Steve Harvey made a quote a few days ago where he said basically cancel culture has killed comedy because now – and one thing about it on Off the Cuff Radio, uh, because, you know, King and myself, we're journalists, and we always right. are going to give our listeners uh, truth. We're always going to give our guests respect. Um, right. You know, and uh, and I have to say this on air because – this was going to be a huge show for us, and I'm so sad that we didn't get to do this because we would have loved to have got his story. Uh, a gay um, actor, he died tragically in a car accident last year in Texas, Quinn Tarver, uh, and we were we were going to have him on, and um, we mm-hmm. we he died before we could get him on. One thing about this show is that we are not homophobic, we are not transphobic. We have love for everybody from all walks of life, and we feel like everybody right. has a story to tell. Conversely speaking, um, this is also a situation where we don't believe in people being censored on what they feel. Uh, you know, when I right. look at – when we all look at that era of entertainment, um, and, you know, we're you know, we young and back then, so it's like – we're seeing some of the jokes, some of the shows, some of the videos, and we're just looking at it like, yo, this shit is entertaining. I mean, but I can right. name like five videos right off the top that were shot in the 90s and 80s, and if they did it today, people would, they fucking lose they their minds behind that shit. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, when you all are legends and veterans of the game. When did you? When do you all think everything just started changing, and why is it now that, especially in this time, because it's funny because certain things that are open now we couldn't necessarily get to back then, but just like certain things we did back then, you know, like if they had a show we like Benny can't Hill do now. back in the day. Like Benny Hill back in the day, rest in peace. If they did a show like Benny Hill today, people would lose their mind. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and You're with, right. with, 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 like, I, people, uh, people laugh at me until they really think about it. But I'd be like, listen, mm-hmm. Jerry Springer, <laughs> a lot of people ain't start coming out until his show started and he had them motherfuckers coming out on his show and all that. And they ain't no shit went to change in the meat. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. well, I was in Atlanta. In Atlanta, mm-hmm. you, 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 better check the, you better check the baby pictures. Forget the throat. Before you try to holler <laughs> at something, make sure it, you better make sure it, it's what it is. Now, not yeah. what people do and, and, and not their lifestyle and all that, but just, just it's just like right. TV ain't TV. When you got the cartoons and all that stuff starting to have it in the cartoons, bro, is bad. Mm-hmm. You you taking our childhood, you taking the kids' real. childhood you, away from you. For putting real. it Don't in the in the cartoons now. Not my son, cause my son, I got a nine year old son. He be like, Dad, I don't like it. 
can I fight one of them if they try? I'll be like, son, you can't fight them. You, you, you can't fight them. But if they try to touch my wife, now that's different. I say, right. no, nah, I say, no, nah, hopefully they'll learn how, you know, who, who is and who not. Like, you, you got ones out here that know not to try it. So they know yep. what you buy. They know don't do you, you ain't you you ain't that way. But some of them do. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's getting into the schools, bro. It's like the schools right. now. Come on, man. Nah, baby, I got two partners that want to homeschool their kids. And, and, it's, and, that, and that, it's that's, wild. that's yeah. where they go ahead, to go taking ahead, go take, take that's where they um taking away our freedom because we you know what I'm saying we we it used to be so easy to do you know. It, it it was always family oriented, mother, father, kids. You know what I'm saying? We we yeah. really didn't have all what we had. You know the the way it's the way it's portrayed now. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like them taking them taking you know the pledge the pledge allegiance. And I you know them talking about God and praying and all of that, taking that out of school. But but then you you putting yeah. in all this all this evil mess, all this. Man on man and okay for a woman to be with a woman, you know. I don't yeah. understand that, man. Nah, I don't get you that. Know, you know, one thing about it, I think, uh, because when we look at it, uh, and you know, of course, we're gonna have a frank discussion, seeing we're there with it. Um, I don't think it's an issue because, from a certain level of how people live their lives, um, when you're dealing with certain elements. Especially in black culture, um, homophobia has always been a very uncomfortable subject, um, but obviously it's always been there. You know, when we look at, you know, homosexuality, when we look at, you know, one thing about it and when everybody tries to say, well, you know, it's a conspiracy, I'm like, well, it's not necessarily a conspiracy because I'm like, it's always been there. We're just seeing more of what had already existed. It's not and, like it's a Go yeah, ahead, ahead, see, that's the thing. They, we didn't, if they were back when we was growing up, we didn't know. Half of the time, you didn't know. You didn't know if they went with, what, you didn't know. They didn't have, they didn't, they, they hid it. Now? Right, right. Yeah, you they walk around, them, you them wearing stilettos, you might have right. a full beard like you, uh, what, gold teeth and all, but dress straight like a, and it's like come on don't do that bro it's like that's 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 my whole thing man come bro, on bro it's, it's like they 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 trying to throw it on you know they they want to throw there it there you on go them. that's the word that's the, that's the whole thing you know what i'm saying don't 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 try to force it don't try to force this on me it's just like the shot you want to force me to get a shot don't force nothing on me let me make up my mind what i want to do and I think from whether it's a shot or whether people sexuality, I think it's all about doing exploration and really finding who you really are and how you feel about it. Because what my thing is, in terms of how you live your life, you have a right to live your life privately in terms of what makes you happy. You don't, I've, like Scarface said on my blog, your business ain't right. everybody else's business. Right. Um, there you go. There you, you know, and that's something. Yeah, you know, and that's something that I believe that, you know, um, you know, as we move in this society in terms, because one thing about social media, y'all, um, and this is, I think, the difference of where we, our generation, came up, because whether we listen to music, whether we see things, we had a wide variety that really shaped our vision that was organic. Now everything mm-hmm. seems to be automated and artificial in terms of it. You know, there wasn't a, yeah. there was a real goon in the street. You earned being a goon by real reputation. You didn't have social media right. in terms of all this. You were really, if you, if you were really nice on a microphone, you had uh-huh. to go through vetting periods in terms of you really had to go to a label and audition, you know, um, if in terms of music. If you really understood right. it, that's why, what, like like you said about all of your influences that were just people would think was atypical of a black man and especially a black man in hip-hop culture. But the reality is those were all time. And, of course, Elton John, who's gay. And I don't give a damn. El- El- Elton John right, is one of the best right. ever. See, you know, it's right. like, and see, right. that's one of my favorite artists. Boy, so. It ain't that. Yeah. It ain't that. 
Yeah, but even with Elton, you know, or Kevin Campbell. Yeah, and even with Elton John, you, <laughs> right. know, you know he's gay, but Elton is not a guy who just says, "Look at me." You know, it's like, right? You know, right. it's like, yeah, it's like with George Michael, rest in peace. You know, we knew right. they came out the closet, but it's like they were like, okay, but it's like they didn't do it for attention. Their thing was, right? By then, their music had already spoken for themselves, and you know, we were already fans. We even for me being a heavy metal head with Rob Halford of Judas Priest. Yep. I don't care that Rob uh, Queen. Is gay. Yeah, or Freddie Mercury. Exactly. Right. These are the music stands on its own. Uh and we have certain rappers that get out there with a whole bunch of shenanigans who want to do crazy shit and they always looking for stunts. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And it's mm-hmm. like my thing is, okay, dude, okay, now the dog and pony act is over. You know, if you want to be gay, that's your business, but do you have music that really stands up in terms of you know, is it really going to have longevity? You know, is it right, going to be right. something that's really going to last outside of what you want to portray? You know, and I'm like, if that's mm-hmm. your life, that's your life. You don't, it's almost like people, and I want to be very careful when I say this because I'm not trying to disparage the gay or trans community by any means when I say this. But my thing is, I'll put it, I'll put this in the same way where people say, well, I got my own car, I pay my own bills, I got my own house. I'm like, fucking congratulations, you're an adult. (laughs) Right. You know, if you want to live your life in terms of who you want to be with, congratulations for living your life on your terms. There's really nothing special about it. You're just living your life. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, and and you have a right to live your life. I'm not going to look at you or hate you for your choices in terms of if it doesn't harm me or somebody else. So, it's almost like people looking at it as something of distinction, but I'm like, um, that's been going on. You're not the first to do it, and I think that's where a lot of people need to understand it. It's, it's always been there. Now, is it a little more out there now because of where we are in society? Is it open? Absolutely. Um, but it's the fact that you're just living your life now. I'm like, all it is now is just something that, like I said, we've already seen. Um, when you look at social media, guys, um, and you look at how it has influenced the music and hip hop culture. Um, how do you feel about it from a level of marketing, uh, production? Uh, because you guys really had to get an organic base to really get your music out. But once it caught fire, you know, y'all started just smoking it everywhere. Um, and now we're seeing a situation where a lot of young artists are coming in where they really don't put in the work, don't necessarily have mm-hmm. the uh, talent at times, but their and their whole thing is to substitute and comp- compensate. Their thing is going viral. Uh, right. Is guys who really lived it, seen it, done it, how do you feel today about where the climate is in culture and media? Well, where where's where it's at now, I think I think that it's like they I think it, it, everything is just mostly like organized as far as like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? When, when I say that I'm saying cause it, it, everything is basically gang related. The music the music that that's going on now, most people that's buying the music are affiliated with some type of something. You you feel what I'm saying, and and I think it's right. taking our culture. Um, I think it's to tell you the truth. I think it's, it's, it's driving our culture down because the the um, people that they the people that they that's listening to their music they they think that that that's the way of life and that that's cool. You know what I'm saying? When really that 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 shit ain't cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Because a, a, a lot of these artists, even though some of them, a lot of these artists, like. They they not they don't a lot of them really don't don't live that life and that's why I think a lot of them passing too you know what I'm saying because they 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 glorifying a culture that that that's just not to me that's just not them and they 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 driving they driving you know they peers down that same road um, yeah and they yeah, yeah. and they drive bro it's like it's like they they don't. They 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 lay they lazy but they not it's like that that internet man it's like bro we foot soldiers 
We used to yeah. we, we we had to get it from the muscle. We used to go on getting them in stores, getting them putting them posters up by sale, going shake hands, signing autographs and all that to our hands cramping. You know what I'm Come saying? On, they man. don't do that no more. They don't do they they reach us through social media. Half of them be scared because they run their mouth and all that. Half of them soften in hospital cotton. <laughs> and, and, and they scared to go out here and shake hands and, and touch because they think somebody, which they, half of them do, they set themselves up to get robbed or whatever. Because a lot of these cats street dudes for real, and they test them. I'm going to say, well, let me see. Let me, let me, let me see if he really bought what he say he bought. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 bore him. I'm going to snatch his chain. And nowadays, they'll snatch your chain and go right on the Internet and go live and show, yeah, I got that nigga chain. It's like, yeah, like, the, the coat, like like you said, it's like, come on, man. Yo, it's like, we foot those, man. We used to get in the front of them. They don't do that no more. It's like, but they say they'll get 50 to 100 grand a show quick, and they'll cheat you on, on the show. They don't put no real. A couple of them, like I respect, they put on a show. A lot of them take time in their craft and they put a show together. Some of them just sit there, they walk around on stage. How much you paid them? How much you? How much it was to book them? Eighty grand. What? Yeah. For a club that whole three hundred and fifty people. So come on, man. Yeah, bro. I I went to um I went to ninety seven point nine um birthday bash this year up here in Atlanta. And they had maybe about twelve groups on there, and out of twelve mm-hmm. groups, three met, three had a straight stage show. Yeah, they don't take their time. Out of, they crap. Out of twelve know. groups, by three of them. Yep. Um, That's why we out here fighting the man, and we show him that you look. You got to take time. You got to take craft in your show, man. We 29 years in this shit, bro, and I see I jump off the stage. I go still, get him. Me and Cute all don't play on that on that stage, man. We go get them. You got to. A lot of them there just because a lot of this new age, we like we we have mixed crowds sometimes. They just be standing around. Oh, I'm going. Are you going to stand? Okay, I'm going to jump out here. I'm going to make you dance. You're going to dance. I'm going to get you. So yeah, it's like take your time with your craft, man. Take your time with it. Ain't just the music you going in the studio. You you going make your show. Put on a show, bro. Put on a show because people want to see that. People spending big big dollars to come see you perform. So what stop cheating, man. We don't let, don't stop cheating, cheating the game, bro. Straight up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As long as you're not being you. political, you know when the game gets real political, it takes the fun out of it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, man. They water it, 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 water it down, and you're right. It takes the fun out of it, bro. We water it down, and they're killing each yeah, other yeah. like crazy. I mean, bro, they're killing each other. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, now, I well, one thing about it, y'all. I want to shoot this okay. to y'all too, if you know, for, for, for um, history reasons. Now, did you guys receive, like, a lot of backlash and hate from other regions because of y'all's style of music at that time? No, not at all. Not I was going to say, no, uh-uh. I was going to say, I can't say we did at all. Yeah, the the, the only reason, to tell you the truth, the, the only backlash we got was from the uh, the owner of Source magazine. We ain't get it from we ain't get it from uh, from Jeremy T. Uh, T. Yeah, uh, Jeremy Mills. We ain't, we, we ain't yeah we ain't get it from him. You know what I'm saying? Cause he like we we was rated in the Source magazine for both of our albums. The three mics. They right. wanted to get word on the street. We were we were supposed to get four four mics. They gave us three. Yeah, because remember it was a, it was a one uh, to five uh, mic scale in the source. Right, right. Yeah, five mics. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And they 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 wanted to give us. I remember Jerry say that first album was a classic because we we, yep. we sat down when when he came to Florida. You know what I'm saying? We all yep. rode around. He told us what that first. And he said he said they would not let me give y'all no more than three and a half mics. Yeah. You know, and that and we felt like that that was only because we we was a group that was out of South, you know, that was out of South Florida doing the type of music that we do. 
You know, um, mm-hmm. Source was Source was a biased magazine back then. Cause all they they were just yeah. wanting, you know, niggas out of New York. You know, they, um, they ain't no they can, ain't no niggas from the side had flavor too. Yeah, yeah and they, they see we it. we fought them out because we rap. We ain't just yeah. do booty shape. You know right. what I'm saying? We 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 talk we 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 talk about the real and we rap. We ain't just we rap on our songs and all that shit. So nah. It wasn't nothing, no. So, and, yeah. I'm a, and I'm going to tell y'all, and I'm going to say this, y'all, because uh, I've been a reader of the source for almost 30 years. Um, and you're right. They did have a New York bias because, I, if, you know, uh, because at the time, because one thing about it, you all were part of that second, well, I won't even, I won't even say second generation. You were part of that first generation of what was going to become, you know, the southern Domination. I mean, like I said, you all came out with Chris Cross, Outkast, you know, TLC during that time in the 90s. So you all were part of a movement that would influence so many behind it. So in terms of where, and I think the source, they, they started to make amends for the 94. Uh, it was the Loot There It Is issue, a.k.a. the Miami scene. Uh, for those of you yeah, who I remember that, eBay, the was I, in that one. I, I, yeah, yeah, I was in for that those too. that can, yeah, for those that can cop that issue on eBay, please do it. It's a great history of Miami hip hop, uh, Florida Southern hip hop in general. It's a great read. Um, but you all really made a tremendous contribution to the game. And um, one thing about it, I think more importantly, Ted and Q, your music was fun. It was just something right. to party to. You know, we, 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 you know, we could listen to y'all shit and we have not a care in the world. We just dance. We just have, and I think that's the element today that at some level is missing because when we think about what you, Luke, um, you know, what, you know, uh, 69 boys, this and that will come later, you know, 95 South. Mm-hmm. Right. They just made anthems, man. Y'all, I mean, I'm a little emotional about it because you all wrote a soundtrack of life. Your music was a way for us as young niggas back in the day of navigating Have our fun. adolescence. Yeah. Right. You all are. I mean, you. I mean, we can't. King and myself cannot thank you enough for all the great memories you all contributed. To our nostalgia, and you're still here we that we can talk to y'all and thank you for that. Um, man, we appreciate that. Yeah, man, that's a real lot. Really appreciate it. It's been a long yeah. journey, bro. <laughs> and when and when we talked yeah. earlier about where it is now in terms of the street game, because you all from Florida, so you know about the real Jones convertible bird, big mm-hmm. eyes, movie boys, you know Zopan. So y'all know how it went down down there. Um, and when you, what you said about a lot of artists who are dying at a young age, there is life and death in the tongue. The Bible teaches us that. Right, um, right. Yeah. And a lot of yeah. times these artists are playing with stuff that they don't really understand in terms of street life. And if you have beef For with real. a nigga that's... There you, you know, go. When you have beef with a nigga, that's one thing. Um, but when you get like the late great Charlie Murphy said, habitually line stepping, where you start saying shit that is inviting violence, right? That is, that is right mm-hmm. at all. You know, <clears throat> you know, because there's a certain point where if you got to stand your ground, if you got to fight it out, hell, if you got to shoot it out, that's one thing. But violence, because I'm not a pacifist, the pacifists don't believe short. in violence. Right. Exactly, like exactly what my brother said. Violence should be a last resort if that's what it comes to. But that should not be something that you are. Uh, I remember what my man said in, Ch- in in the movie Tap. You know, Ronnie Cox, what he was saying to Tom Cruise and all of them. Uh, you know, Timothy Hutton when you know when they took over the school, the military school, and he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, you're a death lover." He's like, "Somebody put in your mind." That dying right. for a cause is so noble, and he was saying, "Let me tell you one thing, Brian. Death is bad. Don't yeah, cry yeah. it out." Um, I had to go there for a minute. I had to take it to church for a minute, you know, because it's like hey, you don't right. put, 
Yeah, you don't right. put yourself in a situation where you know you're going to get hurt. Deliver. I mean, it's right. it's not noble to put your life or your crew's life on the line for some perceived slight or trying to prove masculinity. Because one thing about it is, and I tell, and I and I OG said this years ago, I never <laughs> forgot it. Niggas ain't niggas once they once you got a gun, you, they ain't stop making guns after you got one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. right. Your your gun wasn't the last gun that was made. Exactly. And you know, you yeah, got man. niggas that'll pull faster than you will, depending on the situation. So you wanna you wanna be able to um move in a way that is safe and, you know, responsible. And I think a lot of artists, um shout out to Uncle Richie Rich in the Bay Area. Uh, because he talked about it from a music perspective from when he came up, he's an OG. He told us uh, a couple of years ago when he came on the show about how coming from the town out there that you didn't get in the booth until like niggas won't let you, the OGs won't let you put out music until you were ready and they heard you and they knew right. you were ready. And it's like there now you go. Young, exactly. Yeah. And it's like now these young kids are jumping in, but it's like, and a lot of them get burned out or whatever because they wonder why they not having that continuous success because I'm like, your gimmick is only going to go so long before people want the talent that is going to be the true and genuine article of your artistry. Gimmicks are only yeah. smoke and mirrors until the yeah. facade falls and the talent has to show. Cream is going to rise to the top in terms of what... Um, right. And, and see, and, that, and, and it, it pisses me off so bad because there's so many people out here with good music, man. I know a lot of them, they got great music. But it's hard mm-hmm. for them to get in because they're they letting all this gimmick scene. It's basically yeah. like a lot of times, if you don't have no gimmick, then they ain't going to fuck with you. Yeah, That's true. Yeah, That's true, um, but this is... Yeah, look at them boys. I, I don't yeah. knock people hustling. I don't knock, but look at them boys. They, they they had a forget five minutes of fame. They, what they didn't had a, a good minute and a half. But them the island boy, he is something. Yeah. the island. <laughs> them boys, right, <clears throat> right. And see, <clears throat> they only blowing up. Now I just see they losing cars and stuff. I'm like, did you just get the car? I'm like, dude, what the hell, boy? Nah, nah, they structure, bro. It's like this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, um, that is. <laughs> fun wild ass. Method Man said, "Yeah, get over." Go ahead, King. Go ahead. Saying it was fun wild yeah. ass. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Method Man said last year, uh, and we know Uncle Meth is like just a legend lyrically, an accomplished actor right. for almost thirty years, and Method was talking about it in terms of like. Where are these young rappers getting this money from? He's like, he's like, where are they getting all this money? He's like, I've been Man, there I'd be for thirty asking years. The same question. That's he's how like, you know I the money didn't for change. All of my money. He's like, where are they getting their money from? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that that's that's crazy. I guess they they try to make it, but you, I guess they try to make it seem like they still out there in the streets like that, you know. But what I do know is. A lot of cats use prop money. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yes, sir. You, I was just yeah, you, you could go. You could go on Amazon. No lie, fifteen dollars. A brand you like thirty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, fifteen dollars of prop money, number hundred. So, so what are we throwing in the video? Right, you spend you a good fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. You got you got you about a quarter quarter million dollars of prop money. No, so real too. Um, Some of those so real, real. A, like, but, yeah, but you know the ones have, that got it, and the ones that really don't. Yeah, I know yeah. I do. I, I weed them. I be like, okay, I see what they got going on. So um, that ain't my business, yeah. and y'all do y- do, y- do y'all. <laughs> um, yeah. We had a manager of the East Side. A uh, uh, shout out to Sean Dell, Jazzy Rosa. Uh, we had him on a couple months ago, and he talked about that. And he, if, for those that know uh, Jazzy, he is a very passionate individual about proper placement of your funds in doing Brand. music. 
And we talked about that as well in terms of how he said a lot of these artists will invest in fake money rather than invest it in terms of their real craft. Um, right. You know, and one thing about it is that for an artist coming into the game, um, doing this show like King and Myself do, we get to meet so many people and we get to hear so many stories on and off air about how this industry works from behind the scenes. And um, mm-hmm. one thing about it is to achieve longevity uh, is one thing to be able to make classics that cement it because it's one thing about it. Um, it's one thing to make a contribution, but to become a legend in the game of it is when the history of the music cannot be properly discussed without mentioning yourself in it. You two, well, three rather, because it's a threesome of, uh, of y'all. Right. You three are part of that conversation in terms of what, you know, that down south hip hop means. The South right. South hip hop cannot be mentioned without y'all. Your history is secure. Uh, as you all uh, working in the years that y'all have, how important was it when y'all started getting money to realize, okay, we need to start saving this for years down the line? Well, I that that didn't really cross my mind to after I, you know after I had a conversation with my dad. But I was thinking, like, when when we started, I was like, man, this thing ain't going nowhere. We're just going to keep getting this money, keep getting this money. And my dad mm-hmm. my dad was telling me, you know, you need to put some money up, you know, for a rainy day. And, I'm, and mm-hmm. I, you know, I was telling him, you know, I got, I got plenty of time to do this. I got plenty of time to do this. Then one day, mm-hmm. I sat down and I calculated from, like, I calculated from June... To whatever time it was in in November, it was, it, it, and I remember specifically it was November because it was around Thanksgiving. So I right. sat down and I calculated. Oh, uh, it was either that or it was Christmas time. But I calculated the money that we made from June up until November individually, and that's what made me say I need to start saving some of this money. Cause we right. we had to made we had to made. Damn near two hundred thousand a piece just within that time. Wow! Wow! Yeah, like me, I, and, and, and when you young, you when you young, you do foolish shit. You do foolish spending. Yeah, understood. We've yeah, all been so there. Like, We've been there. My mom, my mom was in the banking for forty years. Down mm. there, and she would always tell me, she was like, "Dang." You need to put put some of that money up. Matter of fact, I'll get you a count. You, you send a dime, send, send half, but I was like, no, I won't. I got it. And, but like I said, young shit. But I found that what, what made me smart enough was when I had my first child in 1994. Mm-hmm. He came. That's when I was like, okay, boom, okay, I need, need, need to go ahead and start doing the right thing. That it starts, boom, boom. Then we broke up in 95. And then we all went our separate ways and shit like that. But yeah, it was like when that child, when my child came, that's when I was like, okay, I need to go ahead and get smarter with this money. But my mama had been told me from the jump. Right, mm-hmm. right. She would, uh, she would always say, uh, you ain't, you ain't think you can't never come back here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, that's when I smart enough, bro. Now I'm frugal as hell. Frugal. And you know, but and you all were like making that money back in a day when like it was really, really something. Like you know, y'all were like really like people have to understand. You know, like King was saying, like y'all were saying about the levels because there's always going to be inflation because everything is going to change in terms of how the market fluctuates, what inventions come in, what innovations, the cost of production. This right. is thing that are always intrinsic in terms of economics because there's always going to be a link in terms of it's inevitable. So, but the money, you know, like Fat Joe said, yesterday's price is not today's price. Today's price right. is not okay. yesterday's price. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's different. And for what you all were doing back then, I mean, you all were really doing it. I mean, 200000 then is was like, and two hundred thousand is a great amount now, but two hundred thousand then is like, come ooh. on, man, 
For real. Yeah. Yeah, real and, and just think that 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 was just from June until no to November. Mhm. Just that short period of time. What's that? Five, six, five months, four months. Five yeah. Months. We, we, when when you headlining, you headlining arenas and civic centers. You got people like Eight Ball and MJG, Too Short, Lords of the Underground. They yeah. opening up for you. Yeah. Mm. You headlining. You headlining. You got people like that opening up, but they got to go on stage. Some of them getting mad. Yeah. Wow, why, why they got to go? Why we got to go on after them? I mean, we why we got to go on before them? Why we got to go? Because we were on top. And so we, we had, that's when you, when, when we when we knew. We, when we was headlining, we the headliners of civic centers and and, and shit like that. I was like, whoa, this shit, this, this, this is crazy. So, yeah. What was it like when you home? We time. was on the road Wednesday through Sunday. Oh wow! Monday and Tuesday we might be in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Monday night we had Playboy's Palace at the strip club <laughs> <laughs> on Amateur <laughs> night. Yeah. Tuesday, right, Tuesday right. me and Q all gonna spend all day playing Sega Genesis, and Wednesday we back on the road. This this five back six months straight. For mm-hmm. real. Five six months straight, no rest. I mean, them 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 them, them two days, them was it. What was it like to <laughs> sign we go? What was it like then having those shows booked? Because you said Lords on the Ground two shows, so this is a time where basically there's no regional coding. It's like everybody's just on a tour. You know, everybody's being booked together. Oh, yeah. What was that like? Just meeting people from all over in terms of really uh, connecting. Well, it, it was a little different back then, you know, because pe- people you didn't really you didn't really connect with people back then like that, you know what I'm saying? You just met yeah. them, just like, hey, what's up, what's up, and you know, y'all just keep doing what y'all do, you know what I'm saying? Now it, it, it's more of a, it, it's more of a, okay, come on, let's connect, let's collab, and let's make some, let's make some shit happen. But back then it, it wasn't like that. It, it, like when we did that show with um, Lady of Rage, you know what I'm saying? She came. You know, we, we, we chopped it up a little bit. You know, that's when we learned that she, she was originally from Virginia. Virginia. You know what oh, I'm saying? Girl. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, we, um, we came, we came and, you know, we, we drank and smoked. Uh, you know, I think Ray wanted to give you some of that old coochie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, you can have it. Oh, well. She gave yeah. him a gave him a Getting him the weed and the, and the gin and all of them. Yeah, the yeah. But tank away. Yeah, she did. So yeah, G- gave, gave me the oh, weed man. and the tank away. Mm-hmm. Man. But I mean, but we mm-hmm. mentioned too short because people got to remember too short had moved to Atlanta from Oakland back in the day. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 the thing is, people like got to re- we ain't connect like that too because now that we ain't had them cell phones and all that shit back then. Right. Nowadays, bro, right. Hey, bro, let's take this picture, dog. Nowadays, we we got these phones and social media and stuff like so. It's, it, it's like networking. Everybody trying to network now. Back then, yeah. you knew, and back then, you knew who liked you, and you knew who did. So people mm. want to say, they, if, if nobody ain't fuck with you, they ain't going to speak to you. You're right. We had, it, it was real beef back then. So it wasn't this computer, computer, no, it wasn't <laughs> that shit on <laughs> No. Okay. Hey, remember when Kenya? Remember when Kenya Ware came on the show and she was talking about that fight down at Jack the Rapper in Florida with the, with the death row? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Jack the Rapper and the Lamb. We yeah, was there. Yeah, we was there. It was, it was the last. Up. It was the last one. Yeah, yeah that that it was that, that, that was I think at the Hyatt at the Hyatt region. Yes, yeah, I think that so was, we was there. It was, over town. it was over town and death row when they got into it. Yeah, we was there. Yeah. We was we was we was yeah, there. Yeah, we we, we so, was right there. That was ninety four. So, uh, yeah, ninety four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember was, we was right there. Right there, we was there oh, in the yeah. hotel when that happened. <laughs> right there. And yes, but like y'all said, not, but you know, like y'all said, man, when we when we think about rap beats, um. You know, because King and myself growing up as, you know, youngins, um, 
of course, everybody looked at Tupac and Biggie because that was really the beef that was the most publicized. But niggas always had issues out there in the street. I mean, you know, Ice T, you know, and LL, you know, had their little thing back in the day, uh, back and forth. Kumo D and LL had their issues. Yeah, that was just um, yeah. Kumo D and Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, but you know, it never got to the point with those guys. Um, because there was always beef, there was even violence. Um, rest in peace, Scott LaRock, you know, uh, back in 87 when he was killed, 86, yeah. 87. Um, yeah. But when you look at a lot of the artists in terms of what was going on during that time, you never really felt like, even with the situation with NWA and Ice Cube when their shit went south, you know, there was a lot of, I mean, they, they dissed each other on wax, but you never had the inclination that it was, ever going to turn violent. Um, right. You know, uh, and I think from certain levels, maybe it's my naivete speaking, uh, I think from a certain level back in the day, people really knew what real violence entailed if shit really got out of control. And I think that's where people really had to take, even when Luke and Death Row, you know, even when they had their problems. Yeah, they got in a fight, but nobody got killed behind it, you know. Niggas got beat the fuck up, you know, but, <laughs> you, know, from, you know, from both sides, you know, because it was a fist to tell. Yeah, so it's it like, was you was never a, really, yeah. It was mostly the beat. Let's see what, 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 that. Let's see what, what it was is, um, tell you the truth, the violence didn't come in until the gangs came in. The mm. violence came in, you know what I'm saying, with Tupac and Biggie. Look, um, 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 Shug, Shug, don't you know what I'm saying? Shug, blood, um, 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 Snoop, Snoop Dogg, here, yeah, Crip. You, you see what I'm saying? That, that, that's when, that's when the violence came in. And mm-hmm. if you look at it now, all the violence that's going on now have to do with the same, with that same mess. And that was a certain element, um. We've talked with a lot of West Coast legends uh, on the air, off the air about that. Uh, they told us stories that we can't necessarily repeat on this show. <laughs> but we, 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 we talked about situations where, because back in the day, when you had a lot of artists from the West Coast who were gang affiliated, it wasn't anything. If you were from there, you knew what they were talking about on certain levels. But it wasn't right. something they would really put out there in terms of, you know, because that was still an element of, um, when you're dealing with labels still back in the day, labels are looking at you as a, as an investment, which means that they don't necessarily want anything that is going to threaten that investment, which means you don't make them uncomfortable. Yeah, right. And now yeah. we're dealing with something here where, because this is not about slamming games, but, you know, because that's been there. Our thing is we're concerned about the violence that comes at times because a lot of it is really a, more than anything between a lot of times perceived slights, a lot of times miscommunication, perceived disrespect, uh, sometimes blatant disrespect. And what's even coming becoming more troubling now is a lot of these guys, a lot of artists are coming in, and this is not trying to indict a lot of artists who's saying that they're not from the cloth because some of these artists coming out to even today are real hardcore street niggas. But you got a lot of people trying to buy their affiliation into something that brings a lot of death and destruction. You know, yes, there's going to be a certain amount of, uh, what's the word? Um, There's going to be a certain amount of allure because it has to do with an apex predator lifestyle being the toughest of the tough, especially when you got a whole fucking army behind you. Um, right. But it's also something where whether you, you know, whether you blood walk or crit walk, you know, whether you throw up seeds of bees, whether you cuz, you know, a dog, you know, whether you blew a red, you know, there's a right. lot that goes behind that lifestyle. And we know a lot of people who lived it that lost a lot of homies behind it. You yeah, know. that's true. And you know mm-hmm. the, the the way we were raised, tell you the truth, in Palm Beach, you know we 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 didn't have games like that back in the eighties and uh, you know in the early nineties. We 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 had yeah, a, street. we had a little click or a little or a street. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yep. hung on it. Yep, you know what I'm street. saying? And, uh, yeah, S Avenue, J Avenue, Tamron. Yep. You know what I'm saying? 
you, you or you know that 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 that's what that was that you know you you just ran with certain dudes, but we weren't considered we weren't considered game, and then not just that right. you might have you know what I'm saying everybody growing up together, you might know dudes some dudes were neutral to everybody, you know what I'm saying well mm-hmm. you yep. go over here and chill with these niggas. You know, and they could be beefing with niggas over here, but you can still go over there with the niggas they beefing with and chill because you, everybody know everybody, and they know that you ain't even in the, in, in the midst of that. And they ain't never tried to put right. you in the midst of that, and they just knew that you, you were just one of them niggas that just, you know what I'm saying, were cool with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now you got niggas, you can't fuck with that nigga, and you know what I'm saying, because I don't like him and all this mess, you know, but we wasn't quite, we wasn't raised like that. Um, we. Because you all rep both sides in terms of Florida and Atlanta, uh, there's been that next wave over the year. Over the years, we've had Future, uh, we've had Rick Ross, we've had Whole Slab, we've had the Migos, Ti, Ludacris, um, you know, City Girls. You know, how has it from you all having been there? being the originators and then seeing the next wave, how does it feel for y'all watching that next generation uh, come up and carrying on tradition? It's tough. Okay. It's tough for me because it's tough for me because there's too much one hit wondering going on. Mm -hmm. Ain't no more classes being made too tough no more. Mm -hmm. So that's how I see it. I see it as being tough, man. It's like they don't. A lot of people don't take time for, with their craft, and the ones that do, they they last longer. But it's too much. It's, it's like a lot of them good, but they not they not trying to be great. They stuck it. They 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 content with being good. Mm-hmm. And it's too much. Like I said, too much one hit wondering going on. Like I, like I tell people, man, name me song or name me one of these songs that came out lately that you're gonna hear ten, fifteen years down the road. Give me one of them. Mm-hmm. Besides single ladies like Beyonce, single ladies or even me goes bad and bougie. Right, give me, give me, give me something that you're gonna help ten, fifteen years down the road. Or even ten months. That's yeah. my whole thing. Give me, you, 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 you can't. Yeah, and see look, with, look. With, with the way things go now. Go ahead, head. I mean, like like R&B music ain't R&B music no more. It's like they yeah, go straight to the yeah, fucking. Yeah. They go straight to the fucking now. They don't even try to talk their way through the pussy. They, they don't try to talk to her first and get her number. They go straight to the fucking. Now, baby, let me get some head. Ooh, let me. Uh-huh. Yeah. So now. Yeah, and then not just that. When 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 you look at it, like um, what what they doing now? They 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 gotta cater. They gotta cater to the mindset uh, uh, of they of they audience. You know what I'm saying? They mindset is they it's like they they don't they thinking <laughs> capacity ain't where it used to be. You know what I'm saying? So it, it it's like everybody it, everything is short now. I'm trying to find the word that bitch around the tip of my tongue, but it won't come truncated. out. <laughs> Trun- yeah, it's truncated. It's, they follow you know, us, um, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, they follow us. Ain't, ain't too many more leaders. They they not trying to lead. They follow us. They follow everything right. each other right. do. Right, right. And they, and and a person is attention span. Their attention span it, it oh is too God, short bro. for 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 anything to become a classic. Now they too quick to run. They they everybody That's looking for the new it. for the new thing at the wrong time. You know what I'm saying? Everything can't stay it. new. All the all the time, you gotta let some things marinate in order in order to enjoy it. Ain't that what they say about liquor and wine? You gotta let you gotta let the thing marinate. It get fine, you know. Go ahead. Nowadays, like you said, nowadays albums be old in three months, three to six months, and then they dropping another album. Like God, bro, the first one ain't much got old. Another one marinate. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But, it, it, right. you know, we all come from that era. Uh, you all were the artists. We were the listeners. Um, you know, it was just a different time because when everything was just so organic and you could just 
feel it. You know, King and myself, we'll just talk off air about how when videos were made, when artists, uh, features came on albums, it was like it was like a big deal. Like when Joe Dassey did that Love You For Life video back in the day, and they had t boz in it. Okay. That was like, whoa, yeah. they had t boz in it. You know, right. when we saw Dr. Dre's Let Me Ride and we saw Ice Cube in it, we were like, it's over. The beat's over. Yeah, <laughs> right. We were excited. Like, yeah. You know, uh, you, you know, um, you know, when we saw appearances on records, you know, like when Illegal did the Untold Truth and they um, like on the MIC when they had uh-huh. Lil Finesse come in. You know, when you right. had, uh, when we get busy, you had Eric Sermon rapping on it. We weren't expecting that, you know. Right, like, right. You know, and, and it's like now it's like it's all formulated. It's packaged. Everybody's doing it just because it's a publicity stunt more than an actual chemistry uh, connection. Um, right. It, it just seems convoluted now. Um, people really – the. It's not trying to be an angry old man shouting off the hill with the music, but when we listen to whether journalism, uh, whether reading Word Up, Source Magazine, later on, Double XL, mm-hmm. you know, we had Right On, you know, Black Beat, YSB, taking it way back when yeah. she had their own publication. Yeah. When you, mm-hmm. it was about, even with the radio, um, because now we're seeing a situation, and it's been this way for roughly the past 15 years, radio has become corporate, uh, where back in the day, radios were stations were privately owned. Uh, we right. know payola goes on. This is actually outlawed, and technically it still is if you read the letters of the law pertaining to it. But, you mm-hmm. know, I think that's why our musical education from all four of us is so vast. Because we grew up listening to everything, so we understand what that era meant to us and how it influenced music and the artists that came in that. Um, right. And it's like now, like you, like what you were saying about R&B isn't the same anymore. And right. I'm a straight hardcore hip hop head, but I mean, when you look at albums, you know, like Face Debut, when you look at Monica's Miss Fame. When you look at Jodeci's Diary of a Mad Band, when you look at even right. some of the other groups like Image, Drama, Seventy Six Sixty Nine. Oh, I'm taking it way back. Uh, Wendy Moe. Yeah. You know, UNV, Universal Nubian Voices, Shy. Yeah. Still, intro. I mean, I'll be sure. I mean, these were. Oh my God. I mean. That was, it was a true renaissance. And it was a blend. It was a perfect blend of hip hop and R and B. You know there you go. I mean? But it was like there was no separation. It's like and the radio stations played a variety, you know, you you it wasn't the same fucking fifteen songs on a playlist. Like you could just fuck around and hear something one day that was brand new that the DJ would just drop. Because the DJ's job was to play something new. If he knew it was good, right. mm-hmm. let's play it and see if everybody else thinks it's good. Yeah. Not because the label told me or the station told me I had to play it. I'm playing what I want to play. I had to right. go ahead. Right. Go ahead, please. Please. Well. Um. I, I mean, but when you, I, I don't know. Um. How do we go about in terms of, because, you know, where do we bring it back to? Because we can't, we can't move back in a sense, but how do we preserve the history of making sure that the legends don't get lost, that their legacy is not forgotten, that their contributions aren't omitted? Um, what do we have to do as a musical community, as journalists, as artists, you know, um, how do we maintain and uh, preserve all of that? Well, I don't really think that it's a way that we could preserve it because with, um, you know, what I'm saying with, with with everything that that with everything dealing with time, you know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. everything eventually gonna get old. You, you know, mm-hmm. cause when when you look at it, you know, what what do we know about music? What do we know about music from the forties? 
you know, the thirties and the forties. We really don't. Mm. You know, right. and then during during their time, you know what I'm saying, they they during that time, they were probably speaking on the same things that we talking about now. You know what I'm saying? Just like I, I you know, my my kids know about, you know, the OJs and Patty LaBelle and you know what I'm saying, um, Luther Vandross, they know about, you know, um you know, they they know about Elton John in Chicago. They know about things like that because of me. But, you know, mm-hmm. um my my grandkids may know may learn about that because of my kids, but I doubt if their grandkids will know about it. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. you know, it, it's just a matter of time. I mean, it, it's a blessing to be where we are now. You know what I'm saying? Because where we are now is where um, our parents, where our, um, the people that our parents listened to were 30 years ago. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I, I I still go to a uh, Earth Wind and Fire concert, a Frankie Beverly and Maze concert. You know, I I, I, I Wait. still go to um. I still go to concerts like that, but I doubt if my kids would. Yeah, but that's on nostalgia. Yeah, you know. Also, and, um, right, it so it just, to you know. Controlling. They also go back to controlling the narrative and getting more people with the knowledge of the culture and also the knowledge of the self to really shift that control back. We had a lot of control back in the 90s when rap was fresh before they found ways Church. of Church. organizing it. Yeah, yeah, it, it is, and, and I, I think with, with with that, you know, it's just gonna continue to evolve, you know, and it's gonna continue to change. But you know, it, it, as far as the history with it, you know, and like I say, with the mindset, with the mindset of these youngins, man, well, you have on a whole lot. <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? You yeah. have a whole lot, man. Yeah. Yeah. These cats, these cats can barely remember yesterday. Let alone yeah, what happened yeah. ten years ago. Man, what's and, crazy? And anybody can do it. Anybody can do a song now. When we yeah. when we was it, we, it wasn't like anybody can do a song now and upload it to YouTube or upload it to social media. And, and there it is, like that's the, the game is so is what is crazy, man. That's the sad part. You couldn't do that back then, no sir. Yeah. Mm mm. And no, nah, and you know, when we look at that era, uh, because one thing about it was this came from a lot of different places. Number one, you know, the labels weren't going to put money behind you if you was whack as shit, and you damn sure wasn't going to embarrass yourself making it. I mean, people got to understand back in the day what it took because, you know, you had to get on with a label. Then you had to get the funds together to shoot a video. So, I mean, this is before yeah. camera phones and all of that. So you actually had to get a real camera crew. You had to secure yeah. a location. You right. know, I mean, this was a lot of work in terms of video production. And this was just pre-production before the actual shoot. I mean, this is before, this is people just sitting around at the table, okay, how we want to do this, who might yeah. be it as a guest star. And now it's, it's, it's something that, it's pretty much now, of course, with automation, you know, computer programming, you know, camera phones. Yeah. It's a lot of, and, you know, you can buy a good camera for like fifteen, two thousand dollars $2,000, and, you know, and, you know, you can basically shoot a video with the software. But it, it's like, yeah, you know, it's all good good if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yep. As long as you edit, you get somebody to edit it and know what they're doing, it, you, you good. Yeah. But, um. It's like, man, nowadays. Yeah, man, we we enjoyed the build, man. We got five minutes left, man. It's time to go by fast. We build it, man. We covered a lot of ground for real, for real. Oh yeah, there we have, man. Um, guys, this is this has been incredible. Um, head, uh, because you know we follow each other on IG, you know T Max and VA. You know I'm gonna send you. You know that picture from that. I got to dig through my source magazine, but I'm just saying you can pass that on the queue. Uh, oh yeah, I will. Man. Yeah, yeah, y'all gotta send me your y'all IG. Mine at Q dog K U E D O G. Okay. We will, um, gentlemen. This is oh my god, this has been an honor. Um, you're welcome back anytime. This has been. Thank you all so much, man. Thank you for the history. Anytime. Thank you for the lessons. 
Thank I you appreciate, for appreciate y'all making for having us again, our, bro. Yeah, I appreciate this, bro. Thank you for making ROG, Outstanding Generation. Thank you all for contributing to that. <laughs> Hey, anytime, anytime. We thank y'all, bro. We thank our supporters, our fans. Yeah, man. Guess so. I don't, we, we, we wouldn't be where we are now. All right. Yeah, man. Appreciate the love, man. And y'all go get that new Splat Pack single, Let's Do Shots, to be out soon. And my single yep. is uh, come out February 11th, all off. It come out Valentine's Day weekend. Y'all look out for that. Y'all go, go stream that, please. All uh, that thought says, y'all watch, look out for that damn, that, that Gangster City movie. So, yes. Okay. Y'all okay, follow that movie, sli- official yeah, Slack Pack movie, page, man. What happened? Yeah. Definitely, man. We, go, definitely, we, we hit we y'all with the follow the movie. Oh. Yeah, man. He said, like, we need to get into the movie. I think we didn't even get into the movie about this. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Damn, okay, mm-hmm. we, we got to do that for another show, but yeah, man, but, um, okay, I yeah, mean, we definitely this, do that. definitely, um, once again, another outstanding episode in the, ch- in the championship chapter of Off the Cuff Radio, Splat Pack, the undefeated, the tremendous, the legendary, the stupendous, um, Florida ATL legend, um, yeah. and, can't, Oh, yeah, thank y'all, baby. Y'all, y'all, up, man. y'all definitely welcome Whenever y'all have any projects to promote Big shout out to Angela For making this thing happen Appreciate yeah. it Yeah, yeah shout out to Angela the... well, yes, ma- yes ma'am Shout out to Angela Cousin Shout out to the road manager Mr. Maniac Y'all need to yeah. let us come back When we get the cast together For the for the movie For the game to sit need, need, need to let the cast be on here yeah. We're here for oh, it that. Definitely, bro. So, yeah, we on that note, baby. We out of here. We'll catch y'all tomorrow night. Same time, same channel. We out. Peace. Peace. Okay.